All right, here I am recording my reaction to the recent Death Battle season finale, long overdue. And who do I expect to win this one? Well, probably Galactus, because he's one of the guys who was on call to take down Thanos when he had the Infinity Gauntlet originally. I mean, I don't know everything about Transformers lore, about every version of Unicron, but... Is he on that level? I guess we'll see. Three, two, one, let's roll out! Fight! Galactus, devourer of worlds. And Unicron, almighty chaos bringer. That's right, it's the day we've all been waiting for. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find oh, out who's going Oh, guys, is that Super uh, Squad Death version Battle. of Galactus? It's one of the. F I, I liked Team what Titans Go kind of, but I couldn't stand Superhero oh, Squad or whatever it was. It's three and a half beers too early for that kind of question, Wiz. No, seriously, is the wolf that hunts the hare evil? What about the bear that kills the wolf? Or the man that slays the bear? Is that evil? Whoa! Bear Ninja Kick! This question awesome! Was on of Ta's mind as he hurtled toward the end of infinity. I'm pretty sure the question on his mind was, how do I turn this goddamn spaceship around? Eons ago, the planet Ta was a paradise. The most Ta the universe had ever known. Too bad the universe was coming to an end. I hate it when that happens. The Ta'an scientist Galen watched as the rest of his race ignominiously perished and decided to die gloriously on his own terms. By flying a ship into the sun, just like Great Grandpappy Boomstick, the crazy old coot. But instead of being vaporized on contact like Great Grandpappy Boomstick, Galen got bitten by a radioactive god. As the last living okay. being left before the universe's end, Galen was visited by the sentience of the multiverse, who merged with him as part of a cosmic cycle of death and rebirth. As the old multiverse died, a new one was born, and the scientist Galen was no more. In his place was a being of untold power, the ravager of galaxies, Galactus. Ah, uh, Galactus. Uh, fantastic for... They don't get a lot of respect, but they have some of the best villains. They have Dr. Doom and Galactus. Eat friggin' worlds! Galactus is so unbelievably, mind-meltingly powerful that strong doesn't really begin to describe him. Just being near him will begin to warp your perception of reality. In truth, he isn't even really a physical being with a soul anymore, but composed of energy itself. The power cosmic. Basically, your all-purpose space god magic that no good almighty ass whooping god can go without. Sure, he can use it to blast your ass to unholy smithereens, but it's a lot more flexible, too. Described as being in touch with every other living thing at once. Oh, yeah, standard space magic bullshit. A near infinite pool of knowledge and the ability to sense danger ahead of time. I don't think there's a lot for him to be afraid of. He can manipulate matter, read and control the minds of gods, and teleport entire galaxies across the universe. The power cosmic allows him fundamental control over life itself. Manipulating souls, creating new life forms from nothing, and even resurrecting. And this is the fifth guy who's the Fantastic Four. Composed of uh, energy, traits blows with on a regular really basis. So physical sense. This allows him to grow or shrink his body with seemingly no limit, and alter his appearance. Wait, wait, wait. He chooses to look like that? His physical appearance matches the species observing him. So a human sees a human Galactus, a scroll, a scroll Galactus, and so on. Oh, so it's just like how I see the world. What are you staring at? <laughs> what matters most to me in the world? <laughs> oh, Boomstick yeah. never no, change. Not awesome. Very not awesome. At least as far as Galactus is concerned, since witnessing his approach is itself the end of the world. You would only have enough well, probably the only footage from the Rise of Silver Surfer that would make planet, sense to show. Absorbing its energy into himself, then moving on to his next meal. Man, I guess his costume is appropriate because he sounds like a total dick. Like, come on, man. You watched your whole planet die. Now you're going to go around the universe doing the same thing? It's not entirely his fault. Galactus's power is so immense that the only thing that can sustain him is the consumption of entire worlds. 
Without this constant feeding, he would perish, just as humans would without consuming plants or other animals. Gotta let go. I hunt squirrels because they hate each and every one of them. No, no, categorically. Oh, fuck you. Opposite. Squirrels are awesome. Galactus isn't. The sooner Squirrel Girl gets into the, the, the MCU, the, the better, but they'll probably need her to account for Galactus and physics, whatever. Galactus Never mind. is bound by his hunger. And that hunger has put him in conflict with some of Marvel's other heaviest hitters, like Odin and the Phoenix Force. Galactus's fight with the other and the scryer got so intense they threatened the entire infinite multiverse just as a side effect of the battle. While Galactus himself can comfortably cross countless light years in seconds, some of these beings are more like abstract concepts than actual living things. Oh yeah, that was Many from Infinity Gauntlet, which I was talking about. Time. Like this alien bug dude who tried to use Galactus's energy to destroy two whole universes. Even after ah, Nihilus, another three whole ridiculous fantastic Fantastic Four villain. Should he somehow be threatened by beings beyond even the scope of his power, Galactus crafted a device to solve all of his problems. The ultimate nullifier. In case that name isn't obvious enough, it's a teeny tiny weapon that destroys anyone you think of. It doesn't just destroy them, it destroys everything. The entire multiverse is eradicated, then recreated without the target. An extremely roundabout way of winning, but it works. That's exactly what happened when Galactus used it on the abstract god of destruction, Abraxas. He destroyed the god of destroying things with a Happy Meal toy. It's like my therapist said, great things come in small packages. And the nullifier was key to Galactus's first great defeat upon his inevitable arrival on Earth. When that pesky Reed Richards managed to get his stretchy hands on the thing, Galactus finally backed down and spared the planet. Which makes no practical sense. The ultimate nullifier is a part of Galactus himself. It uses his own power. He can summon it at any time and even escape its effects by hiding in a pocket dimension. It even had the safety on. Maybe he was just bored. <laughs> After billions of years of cosmic genocide just to uh, die, comic sure retcons got a lot of them. To be mortal. Perhaps that was the true evil all along. The slow death of Galen's humanity. Because what could be more terrifying than a being that sees everything and everyone you know and love as nothing more than his next meal? In the beginning, All right. before heaven and earth, before light and dark, there was Unicorn. Time for Unicorn! The primordial being known as the One to explore the fledgling Yeah, but which one are they gonna use? The one of the ones that who's the Earth's everything. core, oh, or the... On. Bad Unicron! Bad God! Bad! The One decided to split Unicron into two beings. One of order and hope, known as Primus, and the other of chaos and evil, known okay, as Okay, they're, they're going for the Transformers Prime Again. one? Like all good sibling rivalries, they pushed each other's shit in over the fate of all existence. That is, until the goody little two-shoes Primus tricked his bro into imprisoning their souls in giant asteroids. Classic sibling prank. For me, it was the dryer. <laughs> Primus terraformed his <laughs> asteroid into what would later be known as the planet Cybertron. While Unicron did something... different. Yeah, he turned his planet planet into a planet that eats other planets. Not only that, it can change its form into a giant badass robot Satan. He's literally the first Transformer. And with this new body, Unicron would travel the cosmos consuming planet after planet and universe after universe. Not necessarily because of any hunger or need, but because Unicron is the physical embodiment of death and destruction. He is literally programmed to destroy everything. God's gotta do what a god's gotta do. And good luck trying to fight back. Uni's robot body comes with a tractor beam, eye lasers, fire breath, a chest cannon, and an antibody system in case anyone tries to pull a Drax on him. Unicron <laughs> can mentally dominate an entire race of beings, erase things from existence, warp the fabric of space and time, and even manipulate Something tells me Ultron itself. would make short work so of him, though, from the inside robot out. Body is damaged or destroyed, he can repair it like the thing they're not really part of the Marvel Universe anymore, you know? Essentially the Transformers version of a soul, Unicron Spark is immensely powerful. Powerful, and produces its own energy. I think source. it's called an anti spark, at least in Unicron the Prime. So evil that he uh, can Transformers Prime Galvatron and everything but name. Weapons of mass destruction, like unholy blades or planet busting lasers. This dark energon will corrupt any that consumes it, turning them into a puppet of Unicron himself. It's also obviously the opposite of regular energon, which is created by Primus and what fuels the Transformer race. So Unicron basically runs on the opposite of life. If he's Death as a big robot, 
Can he even be killed? Not by any conventional means. Even the destruction of his spark isn't guaranteed to end him. He will continue to exist as a necessary force that drives the cosmos. Anytime he's destroyed, he will appear oh, again music. in a new universe. In fact, almost every Unicron you've seen in movies, TV, and comics are the same Unicron. Unicron is a literal force of nature. Well, that uh, answers my question. That hates you. All you can do is see it and get the hell out of the way. But this hurricane is never going to stop until you and everyone you know is D.E.D. -E dead. His mere presence drove an entire planet insane. I was trying to be poetic before, but uh, this, this is what evil is. Incomprehensible, undeniable, inescapable. You can't even wait him out. He is unbound by the concept of linear time. The Chaos Bringer is so powerful, his mere presence wrecks the space-time continuum and can erase galaxies from existence just by strolling by. To be clear, it isn't the force he's generating by moving that destroys things, it's his existence. His mere being is so overwhelmingly evil that the fabric of space-time cannot fathom Unicron's presence. Holy f Dude, uh, it was no, pretty bad when Galactus the is the lesser of two evils. Of entire multiverse, one universe at a time. Estimates for the size of the Transformers multiverse vary from over 15 quadrillion universes to an infinite number of universes, branching timelines, and planes of existence. And who better to portray a being who brings death to the universe than the man who gave birth to modern cinema? A final role fitting for an artist so much larger than life. Or deeply ironic that it's a feature-length toy commercial. Yeah, the Transformers movie has always been celebrated for its excellence. I said. Despite that unbelievable power, the Chaos Bringer's almighty rampage through reality has been halted a number of times, usually due to the matrix of leadership, the essence of Primus himself, and the embodiment of all hope and light in the universe. Are you telling me that Robo Satan was defeated by the power of friendship? Forget beer! I'm gonna need some of that shit going straight in. Uh, as the abstract. Kind of like in My Little Pony, both are Hasbro franchises. Goodness is directly antithetical to his being as incomprehensible to Unicron as he is to us. But despite the best efforts of heroic Transformers like Optimus Prime, Unicron has always returned from the smoldering ashes of defeat and risen to threaten reality again. It's his very nature. Such as the time a united armada of Autobots, Decepticons, and an entire people created from his cells, the Minicons, tried to destroy him once and for all. They actually succeeded in killing him, until Galvatron's hatred for Optimus brought Unicron back to life. Because challenging Unicron means challenging evil itself, destroying destruction itself, an impossible paradox. You can't kill Unicron because killing is literally what Unicron is. So, what does that mean for us? Every petty act of violence, every war, every cruelty, every death battle gives Unicron life. The life he'll use to kill us all. We are culpable in our own annihilation. Unicron's not just some comic book villain. He's all there is and all there will be. He was there at the beginning and he'll be there at the end. He's a law of physics. He's as inevitable as your dying breath. Jesus, now you got me scared. As the never was that really nasty all shit right, I had to take earlier. Data through all possibilities. It's time for the death battle you've been asking for forever! Alright, here we go. Battle of the Planet Munchers. As all things must, your world has come to an end. It's like, bitch, I was here first! Planet is mine to consume. So saith Galactus, destroyer of That's worlds. Devour of Worlds. Get your own punchline right. Decrees, Unicron, Chaos Bringer. Alright, as you can tell, I'm kind of rooting for Galactus, guys. Asshole that he can be, he's still better than this. Jack wagon. See? Madness. So quick to prepare for oblivion's embrace. I am oblivion. Well, he's right about that. Be gone.
What's going on? It's like a Michael Bay Transformers movie. I can hardly tell who's buying or selling. I except for right there. Cosmic and Not so easily felt. Fleeing so readily, Unicron. No devourer. Transforming. Beg not for mercy, behold blackening sky. Against mine chaos, even gods will die. Ah, he's a poet on top of everything else. Nice. Ultimate Nullifier! You know not the power which you command. Of course I do. Your death I thus demand. Here. We know Galactus and Unicron were beings who could manipulate reality itself and do basically anything. Older than the universe, unbound by time, they had each other matched in a lot of ways. So it ultimately came down to which of them was more powerful. Both could threaten an entire infinite multiverse, but Unicron could only do so over time, devouring them one by one. While Galactus's battle with the Scryer and the other threatened to destroy the entire Marvel multiverse as just a side effect. Not to mention, Galactus tussles with cosmic beings like himself all the time. While Unicron is usually the top dog in Transformers, he's a big fish in a relatively small pond. Relative to Marvel, at least. That might sound better for Unicron at first, but it means he has way less experience than Galactus in full-on fights against dudes his size. And while Unicron has used Dark Energon to infect and corrupt other beings in the past, Galactus technically doesn't have a soul thanks to his cosmic rebirth from Galen. And he's fended off mental attacks before, so there's no real reason to think that would work here. And as lame as it is, the ultimate nullifier is just really, really overpowered. Despite Unicron being able to survive the destruction of his spark, the ultimate nullifier is significantly more thorough. Consider the time it was used against Abraxas, a being that embodied the abstract concept of the multiverse's destruction. Hmm. Sounds like somebody you know. <laughs> Even against someone like that, the good old Oli Nully had no problem erasing him from reality. And the same would happen to Unicron. While Galactus could always hide in that pocket dimension, just as he escaped the nullifier before. Unicron was an insanely terrifying threat, but Galactus had the power, experience, and arsenal to ultimately annihilate him. If you thought Galactus was going down in this fight, you were Unicron. <laughs> The winner and again, is this is the guy that Fantastic Four tussles with all the time. Season Respect! Done, season 11 is on the way. Thanks so much for watching, and a special thanks to our channel members for being champions this year. Get ready for more Death Battle in 2024. Full Death World. Okay.